<laughs> so growing up, I never thought much about my dreams at all. I always thought they were these random visions of nothingness. I mean, I had those non-sleeping type dreams, like dreaming of meeting the perfect man who checked off every item on my list, you know, tall, handsome, and athletic. Well, that dream did become a reality when I met him at only 18 years old. I wouldn't say that it was necessary love at first sight, but he sure did make my heart do that pitter-patter dance when I would see him. And well, he was tall, check, handsome, check, and athletic, check. And in less than a year, we were married and expecting. It was about six months into our marital bliss and I had one of those sleep type of dreams. As a matter of fact, I had this specific dream three nights in a row. And on the third night of the dream, I found myself standing in the aisle of a movie theater. I could hear quiet whispers to my left and to my right. I could smell the freshly popped popcorn drowning in butter. I could hear the occasional slurp of a soda and the ever so slight crunch of peanuts buried in a candy bar. Then I look to my left and I see my husband and his buddy, Jerry. They were sitting there, the eyes were glued to the big screen in front of them. And they were passing this bucket of popcorn between themselves and there's two young ladies that were lodged between them. <laughs> then mom to myself, I was like, hmm, who are they? Referring to the two young ladies that were between them. But then I woke up. So when my husband came home later on that evening, he was having a casual conversation and I casually mentioned, did he and Jerry happen to go to the movies the other night? He kind of had this surprised look on his face, but his eyes did somewhat widen. And he confirmed that he and Jerry did indeed go to the movies. But he also was like a little bit annoyed. And he asked, why are you asking if me and Jerry went to the movies? What are you doing, spying on me or something? Okay, I was a little bit confused by his questions, and I started to get some feelings of uneasiness starting to take shape in my stomach, but I assured him that I most certainly was not spying on him. I didn't think too much more about the dream itself after that, but I definitely couldn't stop thinking about his shifty reaction and response. So when I had another dream only a few short weeks later and three nights in a row, I decided to lean in. This time, on the third night of the dream, I found myself in a gym. I was standing there next to the check-in desk. Standing next to the check-in desk, I was facing the entrance. And from the corners of my eyes, I could see typical gym equipment. I remember there's a few weight benches, there's a treadmill, some bikes, nothing out of the ordinary. Then I looked up, and there he was walking through the front door. My husband. I watched him as he stopped at the front desk. I remember him digging in his front pocket and I remember him handing his ID card to the front la the lady at the front desk. I moved in just a bit closer. As she retrieved the ID card from his hand, I did notice something. There was this ever so slight brush of her fingers across his fingertips during the ID card exchange. And when she handed it back to him, she changed her voice to this sensual type voice. And she was like, have a great day, Mr. Thomas. At that point, yes, I can feel the heat rising from my chest to my face. So I marched around to the front of the desk, looked her square in the eyes to confront her. Yes, I did. Her eyes were sparkling, I remember. They looked like black onyx jewels, seriously like jewels. She was batting her eyelashes so quickly. It looked like she was speaking to him in Morse code. I did see her smile. It was all huge and teethy, but it was pretty and quite perfect, to be honest with you. But I didn't like it one bit. So you know me, I turned around to see his face, surely expecting that he wouldn't be oblivious to that beauty staring at him. But no, his smile matched hers. Huge and teethy, but it was pretty and perfect. And then he replied to her in an almost obnoxious, very white voice. Oh, I plan on making it a great day. 
And then he jogged off and disappeared into the gym. At that point, I remember like I had these hurt, like racing through my veins. And then I scream, remember screaming out loud. And I said, are they actually flirting with each other and in my face? Then I woke up. But I did feel kind of sick to my stomach. And tears had already started to form in my eyes. I was so mad. And then I remember whispering to myself, Tiffany, it was only a dream trying to calm my nerves. I was anxious all morning. I cannot wait for him to come home because I really want to talk to him about this gym thing. But I was impatient. So I just called the gym. I dialed the number. And on the first ring, I remember someone picked up. And before they could even say hello, I was like, is Daniel Thomas there? And the voice on the other end was like, um, yes, he is. But may I ask who's calling? Well, in my most serious and caddy-like voice, I remember saying, yes, you can tell him that his wife is calling him. His very pregnant wife, his W-I-F-E wife is on the line. And in mere seconds, he was on the other end asking me what was going on. And I started yelling into the phone, who is that lady at the front desk of the gym? Who is that lady? I continued drilling him with questions, leaving him no time to even answer the previous ones. But he abruptly ended the call and said he was not going to talk about it right then and that we will talk about it later. I was wrecked, I remember. And I really didn't want to talk about it later. But yeah, I did really need to talk about it. Logic was telling me that it was all just a misunderstanding but my gut was screaming otherwise. And we did end up talking about it later. And as more details unfolded, not just about the lady at the front desk or the ones in the movie theaters, but there were others. And it became quite clear at that point that it was the beginning of the end of my non-sleeping dream. Our marriage concluded on his words, I am leaving, you can have the kids. Oh, I cried so hard. Then I was just angry. Then I pleaded and bargained a bit. And then I remember going just numb. By then we had beautiful twin boys and the dream of us living happily ever after as a family was completely shattered. I couldn't believe he would do this to me, to us, but especially to them. However, some goodness did come shortly after my divorce. I did meet an awesome man and we just celebrated 26 really great years of being together. But you better believe this time when I have a dream, especially three times in a row, I pay attention. Thank you.